Hello everyone, this is Octavian here with 100 Casts episode 48. We are closing in on number 50 and being halfway done with the series. That's... that's a lot of casts. Anyways, um, this one was sent in to me by Brian D playing the Lux on Blue Team. And as you may have already noticed if you are an eagle-eyed viewer, we do have Lucian on both teams. This is a normals game, not a ranked, but ah, it's still fun. Gonna be a little bit confusing for me in <laughs> team fights, saying, and the Lucian dies, killed by the Lucian, who killed the Lucian. Yeah, it's just having two Lucians can get a little bit confusing, but I'll be able to manage. Hopefully you guys can follow along too. And it looks like we already have an invade. Blue team, sitting in the enemy side's red buff jungle. Sitting on that little bush off to the back of the red buff camp, waiting to see if they can catch somebody out. Doesn't look like anybody from Purple Team's gonna come and pay them a visit, but so even if Maybe nobody comes possible. along, they still have this area secured. They know, well actually, they don't have any wards aside from in the bush where they're already sitting, so they don't know that there's nobody else in the rest of this purple side, red side jungle. But they know that nobody's in that bush. They know very well that nobody's in that bush. And uh... They're probably going to go for the red steel here. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. Yeah, they're looping around to the back side, going towards the buff. They've got Jax, they've got Evelyn, and they've got Lux sitting in the back just for a look out there. Going to toss over the binding to help them bring that down more quickly. And if Evelyn rushes to her red buff right after taking this one down, she could very well get a triple buff start, which would be really nice. It's always beneficial to get there for no matter who jungle you are. We have Lucian v. Lucian action down in the bottom lane. However, Braum is stacking up his passive, and there's the stun. The exhaust already dropped. Lucian's going real low, forced to flash away. Now Velkaz is the next target. He gets stunned up and brought to a third health, a quarter health, some number of health that is not where he wants it to be, and now T for Tito is being ganked up in the top lane. Gun Hunter is up there going to try and bring this singe down, but he's already fairly difficult to catch. He has that ghost running. He's gonna be able to get away there. Now in the middle lane we have Brian D facing off against the Yordle that is Fizz, but Yurt Hunter's still going here and first blood going over to the Evelyn jungle after getting the invade and stealing away the red buff. Early level 2 gank coming in through the tri brush into the top lane. Did not expect it at all though. That does mean that Rengar now if he has been paying attention to the map does know that Evelyn stole away his red buff. Now we have a teleport back in from T is for Tito. He's gonna get uh, brought back to half health immediately though as the Counter-Strike stuns him up right after he teleports in. That teleport charge giving Jax the time he needs to start up his Counter-Strike and know exactly where he's gonna land. There's a knockback going on to the Braum slow as well. It's stacking up onto Lucy and he gets the stone under the tower but he doesn't have enough damage to follow it up. Lucian's gonna be be able to escape from the Lucian. Meanwhile, in middle lane, we have Brian D going in with Ryder. Ryder going under the tower. The ignite in his passive gonna bring down the Lux, and that is one for one in terms of kills now across the board. 200 gold, 300 gold lead for blue team here as the stun lands onto Tia's for Tito script. Kitty trying to make something happen up in the top lane, but Singed is actually trading back. Blow for blow there. Well, not really blow for blow. Poison for blow, chunking him down to about the same percentage of hit points that he is down at. And uh, after his first, shall we say, a little bit forced back, Singe did pick up a Fairy Charm. So it looks like he's probably going to be going for that Tear of the Goddess if I had to guess. Though it is possible he's going for a Chalice of Harmony. I've seen Singe pick up that item before as well, but Tear's a little bit more common because of the passive Runic Bulwark giving him health for mana. So getting mana is just way more valuable on Singe than on nearly any other champion except perhaps Rise. So picking up that Tear of the Goddess, getting it to stack up, it acts sort of like a miniature Rod of Ages. It stacks up mana and stacks up health as a consequence. So, Meanwhile, we have some more counter jungling going on by Yunt Hunter looking to find Rengar. He does in the wolf camp, slowed up by the red buff. He gets healed with the ferocity stacks and then flashes over the wall to escape. But that is a flash burned just for Evelyn's time. No major cooldowns burned on her part. So this counter jungling strategy really working out here for uh, Yunt Hunter. Now in bottom lane, we have the Velkaz support. That's something I didn't mention, but I probably should have if I hadn't had all this action already only five minutes into the match. Velkaz support is one of my most recent additions to my list of favorite supports. However, T is for Tito is getting ganked up in the top lane by Brian D roaming from mid, going under the tower. Luckily there's minions, but it doesn't really matter. Lux brings him down, and now Lucian just barely escapes. He's turning around, though. Don't get too close, Lucian. This might 
One more auto and you're going down. There's the Q. He pops heal though to survive it. And now he's chasing back in and he goes down to Braum. 3 to 1 kill lead now for blue team. Explosive action across the map. 7.6k to 6.8k. Just about a thousand in the lead for blue team. Nothing too super crushing, but they're beginning to pull out ahead. As I will return to talking about the Velkaz support, I really like it quite a bit. Um, he's squishy, and he does have not any mobility. So, he's very risky to play, especially against a matchup like Braum and Lucian. That's that's a pretty hefty matchup right there, as Fizz getting caught out by the Lucent Singularity in the Binding. He dives under tower and actually trades back kind of poorly with this Lux, going down to about a quarter of his hit points. Whereas Lux is at about a third, but to be fair, Fizz is very good at bursting, but here we have Evelyn in the mid lane, flash forward from the Lux, the Binding lands after he falls off of his staff. That is unfortunate. Now Rengar is here trying to follow up, but he's not going to be able to get anything, or maybe he will. Yunt Hunter down! Yunt Hunter down to the minions, and a few knife stabs from the Kitty Cat. Now up in top lane, we have Script Kitty going in onto Tears for Tito. The stun does not land from Counter-Strike, though instead hits a bunch of minions. That's not what he was aiming for, and Tears for Tito's for just literally running circles around this Jax. However, he's getting chunked down pretty hard, and while Singed has a lot of hit points and it's hard to bring down, He's, uh, not invincible. Not literally invincible to Bolas. Lands, there's the ulti, though! Final spark is, in fact, the final thing that Rengar sees before he falls to the ground. Dead. But, um, down in bottom lane, we talked about the Velkaz support a little bit. What we should talk about as well is that matchup on the other side. However, we will get back to that later up in top lane. Tias for Tito is getting stunned up by the Counter-Strike ganked by Yunt Hunter. He's running into the bush. He has his ulti and ghost popped. He's a very difficult to catch man, he manages to escape. He has that tier of the goddess, as I mentioned earlier, it is starting to stack up. But down at bottom lane, we have a Lucian and Braum combo. Now that is one of the best combos of support and AD carry in the game, in my opinion, just because their passives work so incredibly well together. Concussive blows, Braum, when he hits someone with a Q or an auto attack, starts stacking up concussive blows. Once it gets to four stacks, the person is stunned. Now, a stack can be applied by either a Braum Q, a Braum auto attack, or an auto attack from any of his allies. Lucian's passive Light Slinger counts as two auto attacks for the purpose of concussive blows, so he can stack it up pretty much instantly. Braum lands an auto, shoots out a Q, Light Slinger passive, somebody's just instantly stunned up, and that is really, really strong. Up in top lane, though, we have Tia's Vertito getting ganked again. They do not like this Singed, they are keeping him down as much as they can, but he is Singed and he is difficult to chase. He's kiting around in the bushes very well. Oh, there's the hate spikes though, and the flash from Script Kitty really does not want this one getting away. Six to two for Blue Team here now. Down in bottom lane, we have a little bit of a little bit of a brawl going on. Brom leaping into the brawl. Ooh, we have Rengar's first ulti pop going in. Lands the bullet strike. Lands the cues. Those aren't too hard to hit when you're right next to somebody. Shut down, gold going over to Rengar, and actually not even an assist for the Fizz, which is a little bit, uh, not, not so great, but it, it's still a kill, and, oh, Velkaz, can he escape the exhaust? But he flashes away, turns around with the laser, not really gonna hit anybody, but, um, he manages to get away with literally 20 hit points. Whew. That was a close one for the tentacled man from the Void. There's now Young Hunter, again, in the enemy jungle. This guy just does not want to let up. One more hate spike gonna do the trick, and it does indeed do that trick. Rengar falls over. Bro, you should probably head back to base, buddy. That's a bit of a dangerous place to be in at that many hit points. Those are not... You do not have very many hit points, and uh, there's a dangerous enemy nearby. There's a Counter-Strike stun landing on a Tia's Fertito, and Jack's chasing this one, whereas Singed is just gonna ignore him and run straight past his tower, straight to the minions. Singed has minion focus. He's like... He's like those birds that fly to the south, except Singed flies to the minions. He has a magnetic compass in his head that always points him to the nearest minion wave. However, he might be a little bit caught out here. Gunt Hunter is slowing him up with the red buff. The Q does not land, but the E does. Lux picks up the kill, roaming from the middle lane, and this Singed is 0-4-0. He's got a decent creep score. He's 63 creep. That's the uh, second highest on the map, actually, but he's... He's not uh, really doing much else, and he's probably going to have to step it up a little bit, not get caught out quite as much, because proxy seems to not work quite as well ever since they changed the way that um, gold accumulation works with in terms of shutdowns, because it used to be that Singed would just farm and die so many times and it didn't matter, but... Oh, 
Okay, well, Glacial Fissure not gonna land onto anybody. I thought the tail end might hit Lucian, but he used his Relentless Pursuit very well-timed there and dashed away from it to avoid that knockup. However, we still have some fighting going on. This Braum really wants to make something happen here, and for good reason, too. He's, uh, he's on the winning side of that bottom lane right now. They're behind in terms of CS, but I would say that just because of the matchup, the sheer power that this braum Lucian combo has, they can win fights if they can just get them. And that's been the difficult part here. But Velkaz is down at a quarter health. Lucian's at half. If they can just pick a fight and, like, make it stick, they could really easily, well, win that fight. As the Counter-Strike stun does not land from Skip and Script Kitty. And I'd like to take... Well, actually, I'll take a moment later as the laser's not quite connecting. Heal is popped. He turns around with the calling. He's shooting him in the face with him. But the other calling comes out from the other side. And his bullets prove to be the more powerful as now... Ooh, very nice binding lands onto Fizz and Rengar into the tower, securing a double kill for Lux. Well played, this Lux really showing up big out of the middle lane. Six and two now, but Braum looking to try and make something happen. The Q doesn't land. Bluntness Pursuit saving Lucian's life is now Young Hunter. Uh, nobody's nearby. It's a little bit dangerous to clear at that pink ward at 100 health, but there was no one nearby to take advantage of it since both the mid laner and the jungler had been dealt with recently by a final spark. And I will go into some of the builds that are beginning to formulate here. We have Evelyn going with Boots 5 and trying to take the red buff. She's getting the health back from the smite. Can she survive? She cannot. That's always... That's always a little bit humiliating. And you know what it actually say? It used to say humiliation when you got killed by a, um... By a jungle monster. They, they since decided that that was a little bit too mean. And changed it to being executed. But I don't know. I think they should, should take it back. Make it humiliation again. I think if you die to jungle monsters, you deserve a little bit, little bit of shaming. Velkaz trying to land the Q there onto Lucian. Doesn't quite have the range to do it though, so Lucian's gonna be able to simply walk away. But Velkaz gonna take advantage of the fact that Grom's not around, and so they don't have the pressure to stop him. He's gonna drop Pink Ward, and clear out the enemy team's vision. Oh, there's a pink ward in that bush, too. He's gonna clear out more vision. Why not? However, this might be a little bit dangerous this time, actually. Braum is coming near, but Yunt Hunter's caught out in his jungle. There's Rengar. He pops the ulti for the slow, and the shield is staying alive. As, ooh, very nice dash over the tectonic disruption from the Velkaz. He gets stunned up by the Braum passive. Meanwhile, off to the side, the 1v1 is going in the favor of Evelyn. She turns it around, picks up the kill into Rengar, and now Lux is here, and there it goes. Lucian. Brian D is on a rampage phase as Rome from the mid lane, but this might be a little bit dangerous for him. He does drop Chum the waters and he gets the kill onto Lucian, but he's caught out now. He turns it around, he drops the ignite onto Evelyn, his passive as well. They're both taking. She falls, double kill for Fizz, and Evelyn is a little bit silly. Coming in that close to a Fizz with uh, not very many hit points left. Is now Script Kitty's trying to chase after T's for Titty. Tito, he has the slow from Bilgewater Cutlass, but Singed is just so hard to chase. He's 0-4, but he's still able to trade. Oh, flash forward! The Counter-Strike is running against the stun. He really wants this. He pops his ulti, and he's not able to bring him down. Now he's the one being chased out. It's the poison's ticking on him, but Singe does not have the ability to turn this one around fully. However, look at that tower. The Jax has three assists and a decent amount of farm, but this, and the Singed is 0-4. Yet, he has nearly 20 more farm than the Jax. He's brought the tower pretty much down. It's one auto attack away. There, the minions bring it down. So he has all the pressure in the top lane despite being 0-4. And, and that is just what Singe does. That's not thing that Singe can do. He does fall over as Jax picks up the first kill of the game for himself. Is now, oop, the, the passive, it unstacks. They have to stack it back up again. They do fairly quickly, though, because they are Lucian and Braum. There's the culling coming out. The last few bullets do not connect. Braum fails his flasher over the wall, but this might not matter. Oop. The Brom's going down very quickly. A few more auto attacks. One more tagged him and brings him down. Well done by the Lucian and Velkaz. And now Fizz. This is the easiest kill of his life. Actually, maybe not. No, no, he does manage to catch up to him and bring him down. Despite the Bilgewater Cutlass active that the Lucian has. Doesn't really matter. Fizz doesn't care about slows when he's close enough to press Q on you. And you know, that's actually interesting. Speaking of the Bilgewater Cutlass... I haven't seen a Lucian build a Bilgewater Cutlass in quite a while. Um, usually the more popular build nowadays is to rush either an Infinity Edge or a Yumu's Ghost Blade and then build the other one right after having finished your rush and then maybe build into a Triforce or a Last Whisper or a Bloodthirster as, as the situation demands. Um, I don't see very many Blades of the Ruined King, which is where I'm assuming 
that, that Bilge Water Palace is going. Meanwhile, in middle lane, however, we have Rider 1 getting ganked. He turns around with the Chum of the Waters, but he's only going to take away half of Yunt Hunter's health and lose all of his. Not really a worthy trade. Um, 16 to 9 for blue team here. They're about 2,000 gold ahead. As now Brom sees Lucian way out of position here. He's stacking up his passive. Lucian came a little bit too close. Greedy for those minions. He's going down fairly quickly. The Ardent Blaze does not quite land, but the heal for the speed buff going to keep them going. And Brom finishes off the kill with one more Q. Falcos is here to take a little bit of Brom's health back. But not really going to really matter too much. Well, in top lane, Singe is pushing minions. Now there's a surprise. That was sarcasm for those of you who couldn't tell. Bottom lane, tower being taken down fairly quickly, but at least Belkaz does have some good AoE to wave clear those minions away. As now Lux is trying to make something happen to the Singe. He's very tanky and he's very hard to bring down, though. He's got those boots of swiftness and he's got the catalyst. He's got a lot of hit points and a lot of movement speed, and he's running away. Nothing can slow him. Flash forward from Brian D, but a little bit too... Crazy, the ult goes off to the side. I'm pretty sure that was a misclick. Now the Counter Strike gonna be stunning up Rider 1, right next to the little pixel brush, Young Hunter chasing as well. Meanwhile, down in the bottom lane, Falcos trying to make an engage happen here for his AD carry. He's just showing up to the lane. T is for Tito now, getting burned down fairly quickly. The poison taken back on the team of the enemy team, and no one has died yet across the whole map. Flash forward, there's the kill. First kill, the second kill. Now they're starting to roll in, and two of them go with purple team's way, with an ungoing to blue team. They're going to be pushing up the bottom lane. They're probably going to be going for Dragon, too. I would actually Rengar's near top, which means Dragon would be a bit of a risky call for them. They're instead going to have the Velkaz and Lucian push take that turret and then maybe peel off for Dragon now. Evelyn still has seven seconds left on her death timer. It's going to be a little while before she's able to get towards that Dragon pit, but Rengar, Rengar is on the other side of the map still, and he's actually getting bursted down pretty damn quick by that Lux, goes to half health from a combo, is now up in the top lane, T is for Tito's getting chased again, this seems to be the story of the game for this Singed, and you know, it's not a story that he uh, doesn't seem to like, oh, he's at 10 health, will he be able to escape the bulls, goes back to slow down, script kitty, he has ghost running, Lux does not have an ult, and they're gonna settle for the Rengar kill, but he flashes over the wall, and he goes into his ultimate, he's invisible, nobody can find him, Where's he gonna go with this, though? It's gonna run out pretty soon. He has 100 health left, and he gets the speed buff, and the ferocity stacks, and he's sitting on a ward. They see him. They found him. Jack's gonna chase after him, leaps to the ward to try and gain some distance. There's the two tower shots, and Lucy in there to finish off the kill. And actually, Lucy, according to the game, got a solo kill there because it was so long between any other one, anybody else's damage and his own. That nobody got the assist on that. Now Evelyn coming in with the flank there. Lands her ulti into two members of the enemy team. Gets the shield and the slow. Slows up the Lucian with Cutlass, but not going to be able to keep chasing. That is another interesting Cutlass. From uh, the Evelyn. She's going to be going with the Blade of the Rune King. I don't see too many Evelyns, actually. Um, so I'm not entirely sure whether that is standard right now or not. I can see that working quite well. Um, she does get the attack speed uh, buff from her W that removes the slow as well as giving her a auto attack speed steroid. Chum the Water's missing entirely on a Brian D there from Rider 1. There's the nice Q. That does not miss and the combo brings this Fizz down nearly far enough to die and then Evelyn comes in just for the last little bit of damage necessary bringing him down with her E and now Lucian v Lucian. It looks like Purple Team Lucian's coming out ahead but the calling coming across as he manages to escape. Evelyn now here to clean up. She brings down the Lucian, and there is Valkaz gonna fall as well. Braum actually picking that one up. Nice little shield bash coming to the side, securing the kill. That's unfortunate for Purple Team there. Nice Rengar gonna clear out some minions in the middle lane. You know, you know what's interesting? This uh, Singed is in the enemy team in space. That's, God, Singed is just ridiculous. He does go down, he does fall in the end, but it's, uh, not even very many Singed can survive a 3v1 in the middle of the enemy team's base, but if anybody could do it, I wouldn't put it past a Singed. At some point in this game, perhaps we'll get to see him try that gambit again and actually succeed. Evelyn finished off her Blade of the Rune King, as it looks like Jax is going for a Hextech Gunblade. Not very surprising, that's a very powerful item on Jax. There's a lot of hybrid damage, and that helps him out in every point. The spell vamp is actually really nice for his uh, passive on Grandmaster. Every third hit, since you have the lifesteal and the spell vamp, will actually heal you for quite a bit. 
Flux farming the minion wave out from quite a good distance away. This Fizz, he's died five times, but he also has five kills, and he's finished off that Lich Bane there, so he's going to be doing a lot of damage. Now, one Lucian has a red buff, and the other one does not. The Q does not land from Brom, though. Heal burn for the speed buff. Brom really wants this, drops the exhaust as well. The Q doesn't land again. Really nice sidestepping from the Lucian there, and he dashes over the wall just to make sure that he manages to escape as now we have Fizz coming down here trying to make something happen. Evelyn is invisible off to the side in that dragon pit though so if he engages hard there might be an Evelyn following up after him and hopefully Flux returns soon and Brom, Brom you gave it away! Oh, but Guns Hunter is entirely caught out now. Brom killed one of the minions near that tribrush and it showed the little health animation from Relic Shield going over to the Evelyn over the wall. And it told them where she was. Brom, you gave away the game. Script Kitty up in top lane going in onto Tia's for Tito. Tia's for Tito, though, has lots of hit points. He's finished off the Rod of Ages. He's got that tier stacking up for quite a while now. We're 20 minutes into the game. Tia's for Tito is winning these trades pretty handily. Script Kitty running away, trying to get into the brushes there. He gets slowed up by the very edge of the Mega Adhesive. Leaps and flashes to try and create some distance. The stun lands. Maybe he's going to be able to escape here. Singe still has his ulti running, though. He still has that speed buff, and he's chasing after. Meanwhile, we swap to the mid lane where... <laughs> Velka's W gets cut in half by Braum Shield. It's a little bit silly. T is for Tito now. Flipping, and flipping the Jax back under his poison. Jax does fall in the end post-mortem. Singe went down to the other one who showed up as reinforcements, but sadly, Singe's poison cannot be stopped once it starts. And Jax does fall in the end as well. Bolo's going back to land onto the Lucian, and that's going to be the go signal for this Fizz. He's leaping in, trying to make something happen. We're going to get turned around on. There's the Cullen coming out. Not very many of the bullets do hit him, though. He's going to be able to walk away perfectly fine. But, uh... I believe that was Rengar's ulti burned for the Culling, which is a decent decent enough trade. The Culling's not a very long cooldown. And we have a teleport actually coming in from Blue Team on a ward off to the side. Jack's trying to make something happen here. Script Kitty looking to go after this Valkaz. He does do a lot of damage. He's not very tanky yet, but he's got a good damage build. And now he's, he's got out in the 2v1. He leaps in onto the Rengar, but Rengar has some burst of his own. Jack's gonna fall over. One for one trade. Not really worth it, though. I, I kind of don't want to say that that's worth it, because Jax did burn Teleport to get that trade, and uh, there were... I don't think there were any large summoners burned from Purple Team in that. They just kind of walked up to him after he teleported in, and so yeah. That's a summoner and a kill burned for just a kill, so... Not really worth it for Jax, but it could certainly have been much worse. Lucian heading on back to base. We're going to look at some of the items right now. Lucian, for the blue team, Lucian, I have to specify, um, still has not completed an item. He's, he is heading back to base now, so, so we might get to see that happen. No, he's, he still wants to pick up some pieces. He's He's got a lot of pieces of items there. Looks like he's going for an Infinity Edge and a Yumu's Ghost Blade and a Blade of the Rune King all at the same time, which I don't know if that's the best idea. However, T.S. Fertino burning a bunch of ultis, but does fall in the end. Uh, his team not really in a position to take advantage of that right now. Despite the fact that there was a lot of pressure put top by that Singe to a split pushing and cost four people to come and two ultimates burnt. That's really not worth it if your team can't follow up on it. It's kind of just a kill that you gave over for no reason. Because his team, most of them were back at base. And the only one who wasn't was Fizz and he was kind of pushed up into his lane. So he couldn't really take any turrets or go for any objectives with that pressure. So... Not really worth it from the Singed, but he's just probably just going to go back and do the same thing as soon as he revives. I would not be surprised if he did that. Jax, though, going to be pushing up the top lane, and if Jax gets onto a turret, turrets can fall very quick, especially with that sheen that he has now. Rengar a little bit caught out of position, getting burned down pretty fast. Here comes the Fizz. Chum, the waters does not connect, and the Braum ulti knocks him up just on the very tip of it. Evelyn goes down, though, trying to dive under the tower under the Rengar, and there's final spark coming across. Finishing off the kill two for one trade in favor of blue team. That's pretty worth it, I would say. Evelyn went a little bit too too uh, crazy under the tower there and was nixed by that um, catch drinker that the Rengar has bought. As they're going to push him under the tower now. Jax has run down from the top lane. There's the exhaust drop under the Lucy. He's going a little bit too crazy here. And Singe just unceremonious auto attack. Going to get the shutdown gold. Now he's going to be chasing after the Jax. And the Lux gets slowed up by the Gunblade, snared up by the, the Binding, slowed up by the Singularity, but he has Ghost, and he has his ult, running slowed by the Brom Q. Can he catch up to anyone? 
Jax's passive is stacking. He's stunned up now. The shield on Brown gonna stop the poison from killing him. Now the stun from Jax. And he manages to get away with 10 health. Oh my god, singed. Oh, good lord, this is just things that Singed does now. Fizz coming in, trying to get this kill. Braum is doing a very good job of keeping this Lux alive, though. The shield... Oh, lord. Oh, that's d disappointing. For blue team, Rider 1 goes into a perfectly timed zone. His, his passive finishes off Lux while he's invulnerable. And Yon Hunter, this is not the best plan you've had this game. Flip back from the Singed, and he, he just can't catch up to anybody. Lucian dashes over the wall. And Rengar finishes off the kill. Just could not think any of those kills would work there. The purple team, that enemy jungler, deceased, is going to go ahead and pick themselves up a dragon. No reason not to. It'll be around to smite steal it. And uh, that nearly evens up the gold. Sorry about that if you heard a noise, my mic moved a little bit. Um, but yeah, that nearly evens up the gold there for both teams. That's only a 500 gold lead for blue team now, despite the fact that they do have seven kills up. They're down a turret, and I think they're even on dragons, so they're down in terms of global gold. And uh, Velkot's having a nice time just chilling out there next to his tower, probably typing something to his team. Hopefully not AFK, that would be disappointing. And yes, it does seem that the Lux has returned. I didn't mention it would have happened, but she got back in the game fairly quickly, so... Not too much of an effect that that disconnect had, hopefully. It it won't really be much of an issue later on, hopefully. She remains connected to the game very solidly, because it's it's always disappointing when somebody disconnects and reconnects a lot. It makes the game less fun. It's no fun to beat somebody just because they couldn't try. Anyways, we haven't looked at any of the items in a while, so now's probably a good time to do that. We have... Two Yumu's Ghost Blades completed on the side of Purple Team. And there's Fizz getting left on by the Jacks, slowed up by the Hextech Gunblade. Now Rengar's coming in out of the jungle, though, and Jax really wants his kill. There's the final spark, finishing off Fizz under his tower. He did not have to play for Trick's Drop in time to dodge away from that. The script kitty getting ulted by the Valkyrie. The ult gets interrupted, though, and he gets bursted down. Evelyn picks up that kill as they're going to push in onto the second tower in the mid lane. Be even up the turret score if they do get that. T is for Tito though, diving into the tower. He does not care. He has lots of hit points. He's finished off a Rylize and a Rod. Alliterative build there. As now Young Hunter's going under the tower where the Room King and her ulti try to make this happen. The red buff is actually he doesn't have a red buff, so the slow is just still there from the blade of the Room King. The light this pursuit is off cooldown very often with that new Lucian passive, and he's able to get away very quickly. As uh, they're going to be able to finish up this turret. Actually, Spike coming out just to clear the minions a little bit more quickly from the Rengar. So they do manage to defend their inhibitor turret in the middle lane. They're not going to be able to defend this red buff, though, I don't think. This is probably going to be going down as Evelyn going to be taking that. There's never any hit points left, but uh, the red buff not going to be able to finish her off. She does have life steal and that jungle item sustain. So this time, at least, she won't die to the red buff. Hopefully that doesn't happen again in this game. Not with the uh, Blade of the Ruined King and... Randuin's Omen under her belt. I wouldn't expect her to be dying to the red buff again anytime soon. We're gonna push up the mid lane. And uh, ooh, Jax catches the Velkaz out of position. There's the gunplay. There's the stun. There's the binding. Lux finishes off that easy kill. As now Rengar might be the next target of their ire. Yunt Hunter, though, in the top lane is getting chased into on for by T4 Tito. There's the Randuin's Omen to slow him up and uh, fizz, though. <laughs> I was about to say she might escape here. But uh, fizz showed up and crushed all hopes of that. With a quick little dash and a lot of damage, Script Kitty now finds T for Tito out in the jungle. There's the red buff slowing him up, but that's Singed. They don't really want to chase that. They would much rather chase a squishy fish man. He dashes in onto this Lux, brings her down, forces her Zonia's out. Now the Chum the Water's going to land on her. She's going down pretty quickly, but she doesn't have any more damage. Dropped onto her. She turns around with the final spark and loose in Singularity, burning people down. However, Singed does manage to finish off the Brom as Jax falls to the Rengar, and now Lux is being chased out by the Lucian and... The Singed, here's the, her own Lucian here to try and back her up, but Singed does so much damage right now with the Rod of Ages and Rylai's combo, and Lucian is no slouch himself. And he gets bursted down nearly instantly. Ooh, red buff does land. The binding does not quite connect, though. Nice sidestep from the Singed. Keeps himself alive at 50 hit points, which is where Singed seems to love to be. Ooh, binding doesn't quite land. Can they... Catch this Lucian. Young Hunter, there are three low health enemies. Can you at least catch one of them? Runs into the bush. There's the dash over the wall. There's the slow from Singed. And there's the bullets from Rengar. And Evelyn cannot catch any of them. I'm having a little bit of deja vu here. Back in that moment with the dragon pit. Young Hunter 
seems to be foiled at every opportunity whenever there's multiple low health members on the enemy team. Doesn't seem to be able to chase any one of them down. They all are just barely at the edge of his grasp. But the edge of his grasp is not quite enough. Jax now in the enemy jungle gets spotted out by a ward, does not get hit by the knockup, and Valkaz flashes over the wall. Can he finish off anyone, or is he going to have the same problem as Yunt Hunter? Flash away from the losing. Looks like everybody's going to be able to escape. Oh, and there is Fizz with the chum of the waters. And does not land, however. Script Kitty has his ulti running, but here's Valkaz, and there is a lot of damage. He takes him out. Q over the wall, and Jax having a similar problem to the Evelyn. And Valkaz, I don't think you can finish off that white. You can take the jacks, but I don't think you can take the white camp. That's a little bit too much for you. Now, Fizz looking to go in for the kill here onto Braum. Does not land the E for the slow. It does manage to dodge out the Q, though. It's a very nice urgent strike. However, he gets... Actually, he zone uses the Glacial Fisher, and now he's getting burned down, though, pretty quick. This passive is stacking up, and the stun lands as Evelyn flashes on the wall after him. Now, T is for Tito, is running circles around the enemy team. The poison is ticking down onto the Braum. However, he does have the Relic Shield. Well, Shield to keep himself alive for a little bit longer. He manages to survive as now Tia's for Tito has the passive, but nobody can pop it. He doesn't get stunned up. And Brom, Brom, there's a ward there and sees you. He leaps away to a teammate to try and survive and singed has 50 health left and nobody can finish him off. But then again, so does Brom, so it's kind of an easy trade for both teams. Now Brian D might be a little bit caught out here. Yon's Hunter turning around trying to go in onto this Lucian. However, the calling is a little bit too much for him to face tank. And Lucian dashes forward and finishes off the kill there. Now Brian D man, nearly goes down to the Velkaz. As CCV is caught out on the enemy team's jungle, he is getting hit up by that counter strike. He manages to flash away from the stun. Actually, he's now pwn bag. Oh, there's the laser! Well shot! Amazing final spark. The very, very edge. Very tip of it. As Jax probably won't walk away from that teleport. Yeah, Singe is going to be coming in. He actually has his. He doesn't have ulti, though. So he's not going to have that speed buff to chase him, and he just kind of stops. Stares. A little bit odd. Lucian going. Lucian going for the solo dragon there, and I'm sorry if you heard a robotic lady talking in the background. That is the Mumble voice announcer. Mumble is a um, voice over IP client that I use, and sometimes I forget and leave it open in the background, and it says things, and those things are not relevant at all to the video. And I'm sorry about that. Hopefully you can forgive me. Alright. So, at this point in the game, it looks like Blue Team is a little bit ahead. Just a little bit. They have, um, they actually still don't even have the turret lead. They're three to four in terms of turrets, but they do have a gold lead. And I think, I don't know, I'm really not sure. Both the team comps are fairly unorthodox here. And I can't really call bottom lane, as far as the late game goes, in favor of one team or the other. Script Kitty up in the top lane, getting ganked here by Tia's Fertito. Burning down from the poison and the fizz passive. Yunt Hunter, though, going after Ryder 1, trying to make this happen. The slow lands from the cutlass. But Tia's Fertito is on a rampage as now Yunt Hunter is a little bit caught out between a rock and a hard place or a fish and a mad scientist. Ooh, he pops his speed buff to try and escape there. The shield from Lux doing some good work and Tia's Fertito gets snared up and actually with that Randwin's omen and the um, Spectre's cowl on top of it, this Evelyn's fairly tanky, but meanwhile, we have Rengar going in with the engage here. There's the slow from the Velkaz laser. Knockup doesn't quite land and Velkaz is trying to bring down then Lucian up towards the top as Braum is falling dangerously though. Velkaz does finally manage to finalize the kill. As Rengar finishes off Braum. Two for O trade here for Purple Team. Actually three for O if you count the Jax kill earlier, which you should. I don't see why you wouldn't. T for T to have dancing while bound up by the Lux snare. Yeah, he, he doesn't care at all. He may be... He may have eight deaths, but he is singed and he eventually is going to not care about you, no matter how many deaths he gets. That's just one of Singed's hidden passives. Very nice binding lines onto both members of the enemy team there. And ooh, the Lucian Singularity nearly drops Lucian to the ground as now T Fertito is gonna be stunned up by the Counter-Strike and finally brought down, shut down, going over to Jax. The script Kenny finishes off that kill a little bit belatedly, actually. Kind of waited on that auto attack. It's a little bit silly. Is now Rider 1 coming out of the bush for the ambush tactic. Fizz has slain Jax. Very well done. Very, uh, sneaky ambush from the Fizz man. From the Fizz fish man in the bush there. As now Rengar getting pushed away from the top lane. He was looking for a split push, but there are too many members of the enemy team nearby for that to really work out for him. And, uh, you know what's interesting? 
Actually, we'll get that in just a second. There's the smite steal from Evelyn. As the ulti is popped as well. Blade of the Rune King ran to its omen. They are keeping this guy slow. Shutdown goes to Evelyn. And the thing that I was going to mention earlier that is rather interesting is this Velkaz's build. He's going really hefty into damage here out of the support role. He's got that sight stone, but he doesn't even have a um, Frost Queen's Claim or Spell Thief's Edge or any version of that gold per 10 item that most AP supports like to pick up. And uh, I'm a little bit surprised at that, to be perfectly honest. It does mean that he's been able to pick up the Zonia's Hourglass and the Sork Shoes pretty early into the game, for a support at least. It's 35 minutes in. Um, so he's doing some decent damage, especially with that true damage that he procs every third spell damage effect onto an enemy. Um, it, it's quite powerful. That's one of the reasons why Velkaz's support is so good. He just gets damage without really having to build too much damage because that's how true damage works. It's very, very powerful like that. Um, that doesn't mean you should play Vayne support, though. Don't, don't play Vayne support, that's not good. Rider 1, getting snared and hit by the Lucent Singularity, drops about a third of his hit points just from that combo alone. This Lux is doing a lot of work here. Has, uh, Sork Shoes, the Death Cap, Zonias, a lot of items in that inventory, all of which means lots of damage. T is for Tito now, forcing the Flash away from the Brom, forcing the Flash away from the Lux as well. This singe just by the mere pressure of right-clicking on someone and pressing R is forcing a lot of flashes. Now Evelyn trying to make him engage happy as the Cullen Culling comes out. Meanwhile, down in bottom lane, we have a split push scenario going on with the Jax versus the Rengar. He runs off into the jungle, however, because he does realize that the rest of Purple Team's looping around, but he doesn't go back to base, and the ward spots him out. Now CCV pops his Yumu's Ghost Blade, wants to make this happen, has the Hex Drinker, and he drinks the Hex. Blue Champion has slain Purple Champion. Rengar has slain Jax, and with a little bit of help. Lucian showing up as well, and Fizz, please don't die to the white camp. We've had enough executions for one game. He does manage to finish it off, thankfully. He does quite a bit of burst damage with that playful trickster. Manages to finish off the white camp handily, and you know what's... Uh, they still haven't taken the top tower here. This is a Jax, who, if left alone next to a tower, especially with the items he has now, and it looks like he's going for a Blade of Ruin King. Oh, they do manage to finish off the tower, but T is for Tito now, trying to make something happen onto Yunt Hunter. However, he can't flip him. He can't flip him because he has that Banshee's Veil. And, okay, that was, uh, that was a little bit of an interesting flash. T is for Tito really had no way to make that chase work because, the po funnily enough, the poison and the sheet, the, um, sorry, the uh, glue, the, the glue that Singed throws into the ground and slows people up, neither one of those pop a Banshee's Veil. So Singed has no way of popping someone's Banshee's Veil aside from trying to flip them. And if he tries to do that, then of course he doesn't have flip until the cooldown runs back. So, having a Banshee's Veil against a Singed means it's very, very hard for that Singed to really effectively chase you in a 1v1 scenario. And Evelyn get, might have got a little bit panicky there. Didn't really realize that she was pretty much perfectly safe. So long as she uh, managed to stay ahead of the Singed, which admittedly would have been a bit of an issue. Uh, Singed does have boots of swiftness, whereas Evelyn is... Well, no, Evelyn's uh, rocking the boots of mobility, so if she had gotten away from damage for long enough... As speaking of Singed, he is proving a menace to the enemy team. Well, less a menace and more just a nuisance. He's running around in circles. However, he's getting burned down pretty quickly from those auto attacks by Lucian, and it's because he doesn't really have any real resistance. It's just a lot of help. And now CCV is going in onto Brian D, but Brian D has a lot of friends. Glacial Fissure comes out, doesn't land on anyone, but does do some good zoning work as now. There's Brom in the middle of the enemy team, along with his friend LeBlanc. I mean, not LeBlanc, that's a Evelyn. They're both very uh, deadly and scantily clad women, so I got a little bit confused as Tease Vertino nearly goes down the red buff. It's burning. Doesn't bring him down at all. I think actually Rod of Ages stacked up, gave him another 20 hit points, and allowed him to survive right there. That is about as clutch as it gets. Rider 1 now caught out. Well, not really caught out, is he? He's Fizz and the enemy team. Ooh! Actually, Lucien's doing a lot of damage right now. He's gone from having pieces of everything to having one of everything. So, he's actually doing... He's, he, because of the way he built his items, because he went with piece by piece by piece, instead of building one item, then another, then another, he had this point in the game where he wasn't doing all that much, and then suddenly he's doing tons, rather than doing a bit, doing a bit more, doing a bit more. He had this huge power spike. And Brian D finishes off Lucien down in the bottom lane, while we have another pick in the mid lane for Blue Team. 
They lost the team fight, but they just got three picks in a row, so that really actually puts them ahead for the past few minutes in terms of kills. That's... That's, that's interesting. I, that's not even the comp that I... the way that I expected Blue Team to play this. I expected them to be a bit more teamfight oriented because of the Evelyn, Lux, and Braum. They're all really good in AoE teamfights, whereas Jax can be off split pushing and teleport in if needed. So I expected that to be the way that these teamfights played, and having Lucian just dashing around cleaning up as necessary. With Jax going in, trying to make something happen under the Velkas here, lands the slow, but gets flipped backwards, as now Lucian is here to do some good damage. Well, there's the laser getting the shutdown for Lux. At the very tip of it, again, finishing off that kill in this singe. He's tanky, but he's got next to no armor, so goes down pretty quick, actually, is, oh, good night, sweet prince, Jax. Ooh, ooh, he has barely any health left, and there's the two shields, but Fizz. Fizz wants, wants that kill badly, willing to trade his life for it. Goes in with Playful Trickster and then Urchin Strike. And that is the ace going on with the blue team. They're going to take advantage of that to go for the Baron buff. There's no reason not to. They have plenty of damage. They've got three Blades of the Ruined King. They can burn that thing down pretty damn fast. They've uh, got one on Evelyn, one on Jackson, one on Lucian. And you know, I really only expected to see one this game on the Jax, but... They, uh, they really like that item. Ooh, Lucian v. Lucian. It looks like Blue Team Lucian is coming out ahead here, as you may expect from Barrow. Beautiful flash, but it doesn't matter. The Light Slinger passive enhanced auto attack for Lucian will finish off the job instead of the final spark. And there's calling literally every bullet except for one connecting onto Rengar. And there's the Light Slinger passive. Ooh, Hex Drinker. Preventing the damage from the Ardent Blaze. Probably wouldn't have killed him in the first place, but still a little bit clutch there. As now Velkaz misses the knockup, hits the slow, but his, and his laser is running, but... That's a lot of damage that Lucian's doing now. As I was saying, he just has this sudden spike that it doesn't seem like Purple Team is really taking into account because he just finished off like two or three items all at once. So he suddenly is doing a lot more damage than he used to be doing, and it really seems to have caught, caught Purple Team off guard. Cotton is the plant. Cot is the word I'm looking for. As now Tia Spertito is running around in the middle of the enemy team. Script Kitty getting chased out off to the side there as the culling burns itself out onto a U onto a um, Zonia's Hourglass Fizz, as that's the double kill for Lucian, very close there, but he does manage to finish it off, and the laser comes across, getting the ace for Blue Team, and Braum ulti just for style points. I'm sorry, Braum, but you uh, can't actually knock up a turret, if that was your goal there. His ulti just kind of uh, doesn't really do much, maybe he misclicked, maybe it was for style, I'm not going to ever know, as the culling finishes off the other Lucian, very well done. Shutdown goal going over to him. But uh, they're going to keep on pushing. They've got Lux. They've got Jax. And they've got Braum. Jax alone, I mean, does some good, decent damage to towers. The binding's not quite land. However, he's getting burned down real quick. Belkaz falls, and the Zonia's Hourglass going to keep Lux alive while her team finishes off the Lucian. Another ace going to blue team. That is the third in, like, the past six minutes. That's, that's not a good ratio of minutes to aces for purple team here. They're going to swap their focus down to bottom lane, where the secondary turret is still standing. They're going to make sure that it's no longer standing. They prefer to have the enemy team's turrets be little nubs on the ground, rather than large, scary men holding shields and wands, or whatever it is that they have. As an aside, the new map that's coming out, the turrets on that one, look gorgeous. I, like, Riot did an incredibly good job with the art across that whole map, but I just absolutely love the way the turrets look. They've got... These really nice, just really just aesthetically pleasing design to them. And the slow goes back on a tease for Tito, stopping him from continuing the chase. A script kid again, head on back to base there, up in the. Actually, he cancels his base. Looks like he's going for CCV here. He leaps over the wall, he has the counter drag running and gets the stun. He's doing some decent damage, but Rengar does have a random in zone, and he's decently tanky. Hex Drinker pops as well, because Jax does do a decent amount of magic damage. And now he has the Yumu's Ghost Blade trying to escape. He pops into the ulti as well, and Singed has teleported in, and this is gonna be. A very bad day for Script Kitty. The tower targets him because the minions weren't quite there in time, and despite the leaf strike trying to escape, the tower shot finishes the job for Singed, giving the kill over to him. And this Singed, despite being, I think, 0 and 6 at one point earlier on in the game, has really come into his own as this game has rolled on. Though, to be fair, something that's a little bit odd about his build, he does not have any resistances in that build. That is a lot of health. A lot of health and mana, which just means more health, and Lord! the damage from that Lucian. One Light Slinger auto. One Light Slinger auto brings Pwnbag down to that amount of health. Well, and, and an Ardent Blaze, I believe. 
but that's after a heal. Like, good, good god, that's just disgusting, the amount of damage that he's doing right now. He's fully built, he's got double pots running, he's got a guardian angel just in case. And they're gonna push out the bottom lane. Braum's gonna tank a few tower shots, because Braum don't care. Now Velka is getting caught out under the tower, goes in his own. Zaraglazen comes right out of it just in time to go down to the laser beam from Lux. And now Lelek might be in some trouble. He's very tanky though, and Fizz is focusing in onto the Evelyn and getting burst down nearly instantly. Now Tears Petito is the target of their ire. They flash forward, they have Blade of the Ruined King to try and chase Culling as well, but he dodges to the side to avoid some of the bullets, tosses back a slow, the heal, not gonna be enough, and Sub-7 Tan Z really wants that kill, but not gonna be able to get it. Singed is hard to chase, especially when you're all by yourself. Even if you're incredibly obscenely powerful and doing tons of damage, Singed still a difficult quarry. Catch. There's the flip from Singe pulling him back to the rest of his team, and this might be disastrous here for Blue Team. The Zoni's Hourglass just delayed a little bit longer as the damage is coming in from the Lucy. He pops back out of his Guardian Angel, and he's doing a lot of work. Turning his focus on to Tias for Tito. He's getting burned down by the poison, though, and an auto attack from Lucy and finishes the job. But that is both Nexus turrets falling to Super Minions. And Blue Team have a decisive lead. I don't think the lead can get much more decisive than this unless they were to go and win the game right now or take every other turret on the map, which happens to be the top lane turrets. Those are the only ones left. Which might be a little bit of a swan song for Singed, might be a little bit of a final vestige of how annoying he was in that top lane, that despite the fact that they have gotten every other turret on the map, they have not managed to get any more than just the outer turret in top lane. Valkazal's used just for minions, that's a little odd. Um, T is for Tito now. Skirting around in the jungle looking to try and make something happen, but he's not going to be able to. And he's still... Well, actually, he did just pick up resistances, but I'm a little bit surprised, actually, at what he picked up. He went with a Spectre's Cowl, despite the fact that Lucian is the one who's been burning him down in most of these team fights. Even though Lux is doing a bunch of damage, as we see right there. Brian D, though, hit by the Chum the Waters, and there is Fizz, and he can do some damage himself. Shut down gold going over to him. 500 more in his pocket. However, Jax is going to take some revenge, and that is one for one trade so far. Now T, T is for Tito chasing after Young Hunter flashes over the wall, and Jax, he did not have to go in to save him. No, he's going to be the sacrificial lamb here. Script Daddy has nowhere to go. He leaps strikes away. He might be able to escape here. Flash from the Lucian. A little bit unnecessary, but wants to make sure that it happens. He gets the kill into Jackson. They're going to push in the mid lane. Ooh, however, there are super minions pouring up that bottom lane. They did just recently pull out that inhibitor kill, so they don't send somebody back. And it looks like they're sending back Velkaz. Meanwhile, down in the middle lane here, Tias Fertito is chasing in on to sub 7 Tan Z, trying to make something happen. The calling finishes him off as the calling finishes him off. But Yant Hunter is back dooring, and Velkaz cannot stop this. Zonia's Hourglass pop just for style points as the game ends. Blue Team picking up the victory. Thank you guys for watching. GG. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing, leaving a comment, a like, whatever it is you feel like doing. Many thanks to NFC Unreal for the use of their replay. If you'd like your replay featured on the series, you can check the description to figure out how to do that. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.